Welcome back to Book Break. In this video, I'm going to recommend you some amazing dual timeline stories. Books that are told jumping back and forth between multiple timelines. At least two, but for several of the books on this list, it's way more than two. I've got nine books to recommend you, so let's jump straight in, starting with a queen of this particular storytelling format, Jenny Quintana. Jenny Quintana's whole back catalogue is basically an example of excellence when it comes to dual timeline storytelling. This is her latest book, The Hiding Place. This book is told between the 60s and the 90s. In the 60s, we follow Connie, a teenager who has just found herself pregnant and abandoned by the baby's father. And then in the 90s, we follow Marina as she tries to track down her birth parents. She was abandoned as a baby, and so Marina ends up renting a flat in the building where she was found. The same building where Connie lived three decades earlier. But in the 90s story, we also meet Eva, Marina's new and very emotionally unstable neighbour who has got trauma and secrets of her own. Can You See Me Now by Trisha Sackleitcher is told partly in present day when Aliyah is working as a government minister and Sabah is a documentary filmmaker looking for her next story and 15 years earlier, when Aaliyah and Sabah were part of the same friendship group at their very exclusive girls' boarding school in Delhi. These girls were caught up in a whole world of wealth and privilege that turned dark, and it only took one night all those years ago for Aaliyah's whole world to come shattering down around her. Then there's a very intriguing, spooky mystery in The Lamplighters by Emma Stonex, which is told in between the 70s and the 90s. So in the 70s, in Cornwall, three men went missing from a lighthouse. They vanished without a trace, the table was set for dinner, all of the clocks stopped at the exact same time, and the lighthouse was bolted from the inside very mysterious. In the 90s, we follow an author who is trying to write a story about this mystery, and he interviews the three women that these men left behind. So as the book goes on, we jump back and forth between these two timelines, trying to piece together all of the different theories, sometimes supernatural, about what really happened. Each chapter in Catch the Rabbit by Lana Bastersheets is split into two halves. The first half of each chapter is set in the present day when old friends Sarah and Layla have reunited for the first time in years to take a road trip across Bosnia searching for Layla's missing brother. And then the second half of each chapter recalls an event from their shared past and shows how they don't always remember the same events the same way. We've got three timelines in Ponti by Charlene Teo. This is set between 2020, 2003 and the 1970s in Singapore. So in 2003, we meet Sue, this very lonely teenager who lives in the shadow of her beautiful, reclusive actress mother, Amisa, who was once the star of this horror film franchise called Ponty. Sue's only friend is a sometimes cruel girl called Cersei, who nonetheless takes Sue out of the loneliness of her life. And then from that timeline, we jump backwards and forwards. We go back to the 70s and we hear Amisa's story of her time working on this film franchise. And we also jump forward to 2020 when Cersei is working on the marketing campaign for a remake of Ponty, which forces her to look back on her time spent with the family. The Confession by Jesse Burton is set between present day and the 80s. So in the 80s, we follow the love story between two women, Connie and Elise, who meet one afternoon on Hampstead Heath and very quickly fall into this intense relationship with Elise following Connie to LA to oversee the film adaptation of Connie's latest novel. And we see this trip becoming increasingly overwhelming for Elise, leading her to make an impulsive decision that will change everything. And then in the present day, we meet a young woman called Rose, who has never met her mother, who went missing, vanished without a trace shortly after her birth. The only thing she knows is that the famous but reclusive novelist Connie Holden is the last person to have seen her mother before she vanished. And so Rose goes and gets a job working in Connie's house without admitting who she is in order to dig up the secrets. 
Okay, The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. We've got lots of timelines in this one. I absolutely loved this book. It's a really intoxicating, dreamy read, but it is quite hard to explain. So we are jumping back and forth through time, through the lives of this brother and sister who once both worked at a luxury glass hotel. The brother goes in and out of rehab throughout the years, struggling with a drug addiction. The sister ends up with a very rich businessman whose entire investment fund turns out to be a Ponzi scheme. We also know that 10 years into the future, the sister will go missing from the deck of a ship. So the way that all of these different timelines come together really has to be read to be understood. There There by Tommy Orange is another one that plays with timelines in very interesting ways. It's not told in a linear way at all, and the way that all of these different timelines come together only really starts to be pieced together later as the book goes on. So we follow the lives of 12 different characters from Native American communities who are all connected to each other in ways they may not yet realise. And it's quite a brutal and violent book. It's about the lives of urban Native Americans, a community that is not very often represented in literature. And then I started with one dual timeline queen, Jenny Quintana. I couldn't resist finishing with another, Kate Morton. And The Clockmaker's Daughter is probably Kate Morton's most chronically ambitious novel. There are multiple timelines all being pieced together in this book. We flash in and out of different generations, different characters living in this one beautiful manor house. And we actually did a video all about this book and interviewed Kate Morton, so I'll link to that video below it was really fun. I got to go and visit the house that inspired the book and it really really felt like going back in time. But in this book there are too many timelines for me to tell you about so I will just tell you that in 1862 a group of artists came to spend a summer at this gorgeous manor house but by the end of the summer one woman had been shot dead and another woman had gone missing. And we then see the reverberations of this all through the next 150 years of this house until we get to present day when another young woman finds some mysterious items in a leather satchel which prompt her to go back and explore the house's secrets for herself. But before I go, I said I was going to recommend nine books, but I'm actually giving you a bonus number 10 because I've got to let you know to look out for this book coming in July, The Ophelia Girls by Jane Healy. This book is set between the 70s when teenager Ruth and her four best friends are obsessed with pre-Raphaelite art and even more obsessed with each other and the 90s when Ruth is all grown up, she has a teenage daughter of her own who is recovering from a serious illness that nearly killed her and one of Ruth's childhood friends shows back up on the scene. I can't get enough of books told between multiple timelines like that. I think it's a format that lends itself so well to mysteries but also to epic love stories. I love seeing all of the pieces of a puzzle come together through the different timelines. So I would love to hear your recommendations for any more books like this. I will also link here to a playlist of all of our videos recommending historical fiction books, so if that's what you're in the mood for, click through and have a browse, and I'll see you next time.